birthday, Pastor. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. And we thank God for our, our pastor. We thank God for each and every one of you, our spoken word family and guests that are out today. Thank God for our first lady on this morning. And I, I, I really thank them for you know, the opportunity and the trust is more, more of the trust than the opportunity, um, to minister the word of God, to, to trust this sacred office, um, with someone to come up and bring the word of God. So I, I thank them for that. I thank them for having the trust and not only me, but us as a body that the church doors didn't close because they're not here. They're open and the seats are filled. So it says not only something about them as leaders, but it says something about us as a people that come out even though our pastor is not here some folks it'll be empty they'll go over to, to, to uh, some other church and eat some chicken or something whatever they have over there eat off of that menu but we have you know a menu set for us here on today amen so we give God praise for that amen and can I ask you to just please stand one more time as we go into the word of God on this morning amen Amen. If you could turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. Two things are going to happen today. Well, more than two things, but, but uh, these first two things. First, you might want to have your fingers a little moistened because we're going to flip some pages today. Amen. 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 Or, you know, just make sure your hand is strong so you can take some good notes. Amen. Amen. But Joshua 1 and 8, it says that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9 says, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Can we repeat a part of this? Um, let's, let's read verse 8 together. Let's read. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night, I'm sorry, day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make my way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers and most of all doers of his words. Amen. Let's have our seats on this morning if you can. Amen. Amen. Can we talk just a moment, just uh, just to preface the word that's going to come forth, um, just about books? Amen. Amen. Is every, everybody's pretty familiar with books? We even have uh, not regular books now. We have e-books, we have i-books, and we have books in a lot of different forms. Amen. But I want to talk about two books in specifically, specifically. Amen. But first of all, I like to show you this book right here. This book right here is. Um, a M16 A1 rifle marksmanship. That's what this book is. And there's a lot of information in this book. Information. Now, we got a word early, earlier this year that said, um, the first, before the first Sunday of the year, it said the pastor said that we won't um, operate in the book with just information, but it'll be revelation. Amen. So today, I'm not going to use this book. I won't minister to you about this book this morning, amen, because this is just a book of information. I'll place this down. Here's another book. It says, The Executive Guide to Email Correspondence, including model letters for every situation. Model letters for every situation. Let, keep that in mind. Model letters for every situation. Another book of information. Information only, amen. So what I'm going to ask you all to do is help me out with some things today because, because we're going to talk back to each other, and, and you're going to preach the message on today as well, amen, because the word of God is in you. And this is a manual for writers of term papers, thesis, and dissertations. 
another book of information, information book. And this is for like some really smart people that are able to, to, to get this because I'm not one that can get it. I, I, didn't, I haven't taken this course yet, but it's called Finite Mathematics. But it's another book of information, and it's pretty thick. Amen? But I just showed you four books, and then I hold up this book. This is the book. This is the book. The book. There's revelation in this book. There's information also. But it's about how you receive it. Do you receive it as information? Or do you receive it as revelation? Amen. So what type of book is this? Okay. We own it. It's a book. Amen. This is a book of what? Inform information and revelation, but it's the book. Amen. So we got a book and we have the book. A book and the book. Amen. But there are different parts to the book. I'll take this one. Books have a cover. They have a front and a back cover. They have a spine. Books have pages. They have a title, and the books that I read up until the 12th grade, Curious George and, and Popeye and stuff like that, they even had illustrators. Hey Amen. I looked at a lot. I liked the pictures. I mean, I liked Popeye. His arms were big. Hey Amen. <laughs> they have an author down here at the bottom, and they have a table of contents. So a book has many parts. They have chapters, they have verses, indexes. Some books even have characters. What would you say the most important part of a book is? Some people say the index. Some say the table of content. Some say the main character. But I want to read a definition to you about a book, because those books are mere information. But this book is a book of revelation. It's the book. And we'll define this the book today. The book. The definition of the is definite article. Pastor has been ministering to us about having a kingdom mindset. And not only having a kingdom mindset, it's all in the word. So it's all in the book. It's all in the book. The definition of the is a definite article used especially before a noun with a specified or particular rise in effect as opposed to the indefinite or generalizing force of an indefinite article like an a book or and or an or that book. The Bible is a definite article. A book is just a book. Amen. But just as every book has a cover, the book has a cover, but it also covers us. Amen. Yeah. This book also covers us. Yeah. It says it in Psalm 91 and 12. We just confessed it. It said that he'd give us angels, charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. It's the book. So as we go into the book today, allow it to be revelation unto you. If you have to close your eyes and just see it as see those angels on every side, covering you, protecting you. If you think back this week about how that car pulled out in front of you, but you didn't hit him, your, your brakes operated because they could have failed. But that's angels encamped about you. His word is true. So, so it's revelation, amen? It's revelation. It's real to me. It makes, mm, it, it, it's real to me. Because somebody pulled out in front of me in a, on a wet road this week, but I didn't hit him. I didn't hit her or whoever it was that was driving. So I, I know it was nothing but the angels that I confess. I continue to remind him that he said that he gives angels charge over Mariko to keep me in all my ways. He said it. So I think I should say what he says. Amen. 
or we should say what he says. But he is our cover. But think about this book, the book. It covers us. But it has a, a front cover and a back cover. But guess what happens when you put the front and back together? It protects everything with, that's, in, that's in between the book. If you close the front and back cover, everything in between is protected. He is our alpha, and he's the omega. And it is in him that we live, move, and have our very being. So he's got the in-between also. The book, the book, it has an author. Let's, let's, let's go over to, can we put up 1 Timothy uh, 3, 16 and 17? 1 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And, and one of my favorite scriptures is, um, and, and, and you can go there a little bit later, but it's Romans 10 and 17. Because it, it talks about the word of God. And it comes to, as we eat on the word of God, we receive more faith. Amen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you hear something that you heard before, just understand that your faith is being multiplied on today. Amen. But. First Timothy 3 and 16 and 17. How about I should flip over to that? Hey Amen. Is everybody with me still? And it's hot up here. I don't know how it feels out there. But it's, it's hot up here, but I don't think it's just the heat. Amen. Amen. I believe I'm in the presence of a life-changing king. Amen. But 1 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable. Yes, all scripture, it's capitalized, it's in bold, and scripture is capitalized also. It's given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy, thank you. Thank you. Second Timothy 3 and 16. Is everyone there? Yeah. Amen. Second Timothy, Timothy 3 and 16. 3 and 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The book has a title or titles. The book of Mark, the book of Matthew, the book of John, the book of Luke. The book has an author, but it's also the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. This book has a table of contents. Philippians 4 and 11, it tells us to be content wherever you are in life. But it also tells us if God be for us, who can be against us? Can somebody say the book? I just want you to, because the art of learning is repetition. It is repetition. So can you say the book again? The book. The book. Amen. The book. The book. The definite article. This book. The book. It has 66 chapters. In those chapters, they all speak life. They all speak about him, for it's all about him. He's in every book, all 66 books. He's in every book. And I know that might mess up somebody's theology because some folks might think he just came in the New Testament, but he's in every book. Because even God said in Genesis, let us, let us, who is us? He's in the book. Amen. He's in the book. Amen. Let's talk about who's in the book. As pastor has been teaching us about the book, we are in the book because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So we're in the book. We're, we're in the book. You know, our, once we, we, we accept Christ, we're in the book. Like we, when, we're, when we come into the world, we're in the book. We have to get our name blotted out of the book. But we're in the book. Choose you this day whom you'll serve. So in the book, a man in Genesis, he is a God of creation. Amen. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 1.
Genesis 1 and 1. When you have it, say amen. Because we're going we're gonna to go on a, on a real quick ride this morning. Amen. Yeah. If everyone has it, say amen. amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He's the God of creation. God said, let there be light in the beginning. I think God was letting us know if we be in him and he in us, we can say, let there be. So every instruction that you gave us this morning in tithe and offering we can say, let there be. We can say, let there be. Because if he's in us and we're in him, we can say, let there be. Let there be light to the situation. Let my son live and not die. Let my children grow. Let me live to see my children's children. Let me have life, Lord. Let me have it more abundantly, Lord. Lord, let me walk in my healing, oh God. Lord, I thank you. We can say what he says, amen? Amen. In Exodus, he is the pillar cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He will lead us. He will lead us just as he led the children of Israel. He's no respecter of persons. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God. He doesn't change. We change. People change. We get deep. Well, we don't have to do it that way. God is not. God is, God, God, God is, he's so infinite in his wisdom and in his knowledge and, and the things. We just need to only just do it as we're doing it. That's not important. Um, but God says in his word in Exodus 13 and 21 and 22, he'll lead us. Amen. God will lead us. Amen. In Leviticus, he's the high priest forever. In Numbers, he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Again, what you said to us this morning, the instruction you gave us, we give it back to God and God's going to do it. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that, that he should repent. If God says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. If God says that, then that settles it. Amen. We need to only but believe and stop being so deep and going by what we see. But going by what we see is not new. E even the disciples, they did it. We'll, we'll get to them in a little, a little, little bit later. But in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, he is a God that gives us power to get wealth. Man, I don't know where all of this is coming from, but you must have been talking to the same God that I was talking to. And the same God that I was talking to must have been talking to me and you. So guess what? He's not a respecter of persons. He was speaking to us all. Amen. We all have a word. Amen. God speaks to us all. Amen. If we are but avail ourselves to hear. Amen. In Judges, he's our judge and deliverer. Amen. Who's ever been in a courtroom before? Amen. Some of us just went to college. Some people might have been in a courtroom I've been in a courtroom I've seen God move I've seen God do some things that the world says he won't do I, I saw the prosecutor talk to the defendant and work a deal out with the defendant that confused everybody prosecutors don't talk to defendants. Prosecutors prosecute. But if God be for you, who can be against you? I'll let everybody catch up with that because maybe some people haven't been to court before. But court is a dirty thing. <laughs> It's not, it's not the real, the system, the system is not, no, it's not a fair system, but G-O-D, but God, amen? So in Judges, he's our judge and deliverer. 
In Ruth, he is the near kinsman, the redeemer. He's the Boaz man. He's a type of him because it's all about him. In 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, he's a trusted prophet. In 1 and 2 Kings, he revived the widow's son, and he heard the voice of Elijah. So I've been to a couple of things, and I just want to help everybody out. I've been to some stuff that wasn't like, it wasn't godly stuff, but it's, it's sports. I've been to a couple of arenas. And... I never got a chance to see this, but I watched it on television. They would turn all the lights out in Chicago, and Michael Jordan was playing. And they would say, 6'6", six, six, from North Carolina, 6'6", six, six guard, Michael Ayer. And they would scratch his name out. When they say 6'6", six, six, the people, stay, they got louder. Now, they introduced four other players before him, but am I right? They got louder. When he said 6'6", six, six, from North Carolina, amen. But I say, big God, creator of heaven and earth, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Now, see, don't let them outdo you. Mike haven't done nothing for nobody that I, he hasn't done anything for me. He has not breathed the breath of life into me. He did not pay my, he's not going to pay my debts off, even though he's a billionaire, but my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. So when I begin to call out his characteristics, there should be some excitement about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. See, I'm not saying, don't let me inform you. I don't want to inform you today. This is not information. This is revelation. It's the word of God. Pastor's been teaching us that it does not err. It's perfect. The word of God is perfect. It doesn't err. So I, I, I'm telling you, I'm not going to let Chicago Stadium outdo me. I'm not, I'm not going to let them outdo me. Amen. And, and the reason why I simply bring that point up is just because of this. And th it's not for me. It's not for me. You praising God is not for me. Me praising God is not for you. But he says it in his word. And all things acknowledge me first. So maybe you haven't been before a judge. But I have. Some other folks have. And just understand that he's not, he, he is our judge and deliverer. Amen. So you'll hear some characteristics. And I hope you connect with him as the words come out. Amen. Amen. As they come out. And I only say this because he inhabits the praises of his people. So we can't always sit silent, amen? And I'm not a loud person, but on the inside, when, when pastor is ministering and the word is coming forth, it's like I'm turning on the inside and I'm sweating. When I get home, my, 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 my T-shirt is wet, you know? My jacket is damp, you know what I mean? Because the word of God, I, I'm connecting with the words that are coming forth, amen? Amen. I'm connecting with him. Amen. But in first and second Chronicles, he's a reigning king forever. He assures us that the battle is not ours, but the Lord's. In Ezra, he's a faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of the broken down walls in human lives. In Esther, he's a great God that gave us love and righteousness. In Job, he's the person. He he was per Job was persecuted, yet he still believed. In Psalms, he's the canopy of our protection. Not only is he the canopy of our protection, he's our deliverer. He is the Lord God, my my shepherd, that I shall not want. He is the same God that maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. He restores my soul. He creates a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He is that God. Amen. He is that God in Proverbs. Amen. He gives us wisdom in Ecclesiastes. He's an ever present in our lives and gives us understanding in the song of Solomon. He represents marriage as God designed it. And he's a lover and bridegroom in Isaiah. He's our salvation and he's the prince of peace in Jeremiah. He's the righteous branch. He put his word in Jeremiah's mouth and teaches us that he knows our thoughts 
the thoughts that he has towards us, I should say, not our thoughts. He does know them, but the thoughts that he has towards us in Jeremiah 29 and 11. In Lamentation, he's the weeping prophet. He teaches us about sin and its consequences, but in 3 and 22 through 24, he teaches us that his mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. Amen. 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 Can we turn in our Bibles to Mark 11 and 23? Mark 11 and 23. When you have it, say amen. Mark 11 and 23. Let's read, let's start in verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Now look, we're going to get interactive again. Look to your left and tell your neighbor to have faith in God. God. Now look to your right and tell your neighbor to have have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So what do we need to do when we're facing a mountain? Yeah, we got to have faith, but faith without works is dead. Faith is an action word. So what we really have to do is we have to say what he says. Say what God says. God says, bring ye all the tithe in the storehouse. He says, bring ye all the tithe in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. But then he didn't only just say, bring ye all the tithe. He said, prove me, test me. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Now, he didn't say he'll pour you out money. He said he'll pour you out a blessing. What does that mean to us? His blessing is bigger than my money. God can sustain me with his blessing. Appreciate it. He can sustain me with his blessing more so than I can sustain myself with my money. So when evangelists say, write down your debts, write your debts down. He said, supernatural payoff. That's outside the norm. That's, I don't know where this came from. The world might call you foolish, but they can believe that on their own. I'm, I'm waiting on my check. I'm waiting on a check in the mail. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to meet somebody, and, and my faith is crazy like that. Hey, sir, you're the one. You're the one I saw. I saw in my dream. I really don't understand this, but can I just, I don't mean to pry, sir, but like God says, pay all your debts off. He wants me to do it. I, I'm prepared to write the check. Me? I won't have to. After today, I won't have to go and scramble to find them. I won't have to. They'll be written down today. They'll be written down. Now, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. I'm just saying what you say, God. I'm just saying what you say. That's what he said. Don't sleep on it. As we say, don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on the word of God like that. Because a word came forth. Now the word that came forth, write it down. Now just go ahead and do what the word of God that came forth. Because there isn't even a backup to that in Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. He says, write down the vision and make it plain. 
that he who reads it, right, he may run with it. Right? Angels are descending and descending. They're coming down. Things are going up. It's coming down. It's a constant movement. So write it down today. Our pastor has been ministering about supernatural debt cancellation. Not, not so we can, we can floss as we say it, but so that we can be a blessing to people. That we can be a blessing to the community. See, some... Mm -mm. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. I've been without before. And I know what it's like to say, man, do I, do I tithe or do I pay the mortgage? Do I, do I tithe or do I fill this refrigerator up? So then when that thought came to mind, take no thought saying, what will you eat? <laughs> Man, it's all in the book. What will you eat? What will you drink? What will you wear? Take no thought saying, if God even clothed the lilies of the field, they neither toil nor spin. Huh? They, they don't do anything, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful. God is awesome. So when that thought came to mind, yeah, Mariko, tithe. Take no thought saying. Don't even think about it. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not God's. God's ways are not our ways. So let's do what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. So, testing our lives, testing our lives, they, 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 they legitimize our faith. The Bible says that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, right? And I paraphrase, but he who endures to the end. Now, some of us, we can't, we can't just get that, that money. God can't give it to us like that. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. I'm just using it as an example because we won't. What happens if we supernaturally get a million dollars tomorrow? Our minds, obviously our spirits got to be right because what happens then? Do I trust God? Do I trust him? Do I have a need to trust him anymore? I got it. I'm good. Your, your faith can become um, your, your, your resource can become your millions not not your god amen if it were not true why are so many people that have the millions they don't know whether they coming or going let's just look at the news they don't know whether they're coming or going because their faith is in their money that's their god their faith is not in the god of this book the, the maker, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Can we turn to Luke 8 and 22? Luke 8 and 22. And while you're going there, I stopped off in Nehemiah. But He's the God of the book. He's in all 66 books. It's all about him. And Esther, he's the great God that gave us love and righteousness. I, I didn't stop there. I stopped at Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. He's the son of man. And Daniel, he's the fourth man in the burning, fiery furnace. He's there. They threw in three. They turned the heat up because Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't serve their God. They turned the heat up. It's such a vivid example of when we're in the heat, if we allow him to be with us, if we allow him to be with us. See, he's that fourth one in the burning, fiery furnace. He was in that courtroom with me and my family. He 
He was in the courtroom with someone else. He was in the bank with someone else. He was in the grocery store with someone else. He was that fourth one. So allow him in the boat. He was even with the disciples. Man, I, I tell you, the disciples, I can't wait to meet the disciples. They had him, they had him with them. He was in the boat with them. Is everybody at Luke 8 and 22? Luke 8 and 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go to the other side of the lake. Can everybody say, let us go, let to, us go. to the other side, the other side of, the of the lake. Jesus said this, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Now, I just mentioned back a couple minutes ago that test in life, they legitimize your faith. And I also made mention of allowing him in the boat. Whether it's your car, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your relationship with your children, whether it's your relationship with your boss, whatever relationships you're in, allow him in the boat. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Now, what did we all just say together? Let us go to the other side. If that, that would just be me with the disciples. I would probably have to get one of them. Just one of them. Just, he's right here in the boat with you. Amen? And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water, and, and they ceased, and there was calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Jesus knew there was going to be a storm. Just as he knows what's going to go on in our life. The key is, you need keys to open the door, right? You need keys. You can't just always turn the knob because some doors are locked. You need a key to open the door. But the key is, how do we handle the storm? He said we were going to the other side. He gave us this example that things are not always going to go smooth. It's a given. There will be storms in life. There will be peaks. There will be valleys. But as long as he's in the boat, as long as he's the fourth one, I use that fourth one in the burning fiery furnace as long as he's in there we're safe amen we can go to the other side we can go just as daniel said you you can turn it up higher we still won't praise your god our god will deliver us amen so every time just personally i'm in a battle i say lord this is just another opportunity and it's not fun for you to show who you are to show yourself mighty to show yourself strong. Amen. Amen. God is a, is, a, is a God that we can give his word back to him. He said, my word will not return unto me void, yeah. but it will accomplish the thing which I purpose. It will prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. But here's what we have to do. We have to start saying what he says. We have to learn the word of God. We have to hear the word of God. We have to be in place to hear the word of God. I believe some folks' debts are about to be canceled supernaturally. Some won't, but they're not in the place. They're not in the proper place. 
See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So nobody is trying to con it's not it's it's not Dr. Daryl Simmons, First Lady April Simmons, y'all better come to church. They never said that. What it really is is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every Wednesday, these doors are open. The word of God comes forth. Every Sunday, the word of the, the doors are open. The word of God is coming forth. We need to be in place to hear. On Saturdays, intercessory prayer. Prayers are going up. Angels are descending and de ascending and descending. Blessings are coming down. Lives are being changed. When the doors are open, we need to be here. We need to stop being deep. Um, <laughs> and I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the body of Christ because in this, this is a microwave generation. Everybody got something to do. Everybody got somewhere to go. Everybody got somewhere to be. Until, until, until you're in that fiery furnace. Oh, God. Oh, God. What are we going to do? What are we going to That's nowhere in the word of God. What are we going to do? So don't tell nobody. Don't raise your hand. If you've been saying it, just stop. What are we going to do? Oh, Lord, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? You just ate, you know, but the word of God, it says, take no thought. Don't take thought of those things. Amen. We need to begin to say what God's word says for us to say. Now, this place, this house of worship is spoken word spoken word not just any word it's all about him not h-y-m-n but h-i-m him jesus so spoken word we should speak the word in every situation see based on your name that has something to do with your character. See, in Miami, they have dolphins, don't they? They have marlins. They do. In Dallas, they have cowboys. Okay. In the Pacific Northwest, we have Seahawks. Right? And not only that, we have the sounders. I couldn't figure out why God says sounders, but it just came. They're loud up there. That place is loud. That's their character. So that they're sounders. They're cowboys because they're in Dallas. They're dolphins because they're in Miami. That's what's there. Dolphins, marlins, fish, seafood. We're spoken word. We should speak the word of God. It's all about him. All 66 books, he's present in all 66 books. Him, the man Jesus, he's present. And even bigger than that, we're Christians. We're Christ-like. We should say, like when I say bigger than that, bigger than spoken word, Okay, so, okay, we spoken word. But on top of that, we're Christians. We should be Christ-like. What did Christ say when Satan took him after 40 days of fasting and he put him up here on this high place and he started talking about, you know, bread and Jesus was hungry and Jesus said, you know, it is written. He said, it is written. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So then Satan tried to be slick. He took him even to a higher place. And he said, you can, you can cast yourself down and the angels, will, they'll catch you. And he was right. But Jesus said, tempt not the Lord thy God. 
again, he said before that, he said, it is written. So when those bills come in, it is written that God, my God, it says my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Let's begin to say what God says. Amen. Amen. Let's say what God's word says about us. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is the king. In the book of Mark, he's a humble servant. Now in, in Isaiah, he was the prince of peace. In Luke, he's called the son of man. In John, he's called the son of God. In Acts, he is a risen Lord. The signs, wonders, and miracles follow. In Romans, he's a justifier. In First and Second Corinthians, he's a sanctifier. Now, wh where did this word come from? This is the word of God, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Galatians, he's the redeemer from the curse of the law. In Ephesians, he's the head of the church. He stands high with all things under his feet. In Philippians, he's the God that supplies all our needs. In Colossians, he's, a, he's the fullness of the Godhead body. In Thessalonians, he's the rapture of the church. In First and Second Timothy, he's the mediator between God and man. He is the Christ. In Titus, he's the pastor of the church. In Philemon, he's a friend that sticks closer than any brother. In Hebrews, he's the author and finisher of our faith. In James, he's a great protector of the persecuted church. In First and Second Peter, he's a good shepherd. He's the great shepherd, and he's the chief shepherd. In 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, he's the God of love. And in Revelations, he's the lamb worthy to open the book. He's the first and last. He's the author and the finisher, again, of our faith. Pastor has been teaching us that it's all in the word. The word, the word of God. And that we should live by the word. We should speak the word and speak the word only. We should speak life and not death, no matter what we see. We heard Bishop speak, and I th it might have even been here, but he said, um, fact is not in the Bible anywhere. The word fact is not in the Bible anywhere. Anywhere. So the facts don't even matter. Like, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose fact or faith? Whose report will we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I went and had a, a test done, and I'll just talk about me. I had, I had this test, and they were checking to see if everything was okay. Um, I was more nervous and a little afraid and, uh, of just the procedure itself. I don't like needles and stuff like that, even though I'm a big guy. I, I, I don't like them. They, they're small, and they're tiny, and they hurt. They sting a little bit, Okay. <laughs> All right. And then and then and then if you don't drink enough water, they can't find your veins and all that type of stuff, you know. So anyway, I was more afraid of what was going on, not of not of what what the um what the diagnosis was. Well, we want to check because see you you're having this 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 and this and this. That stuff never crossed my mind. All it all all it did was all I said was, "Lord, I thank you just for for them seeing this now and then i can make the midterm correction i can go ahead and face the cross and um i can you know i can put the um you know put the baby back ribs down um and, and do a little more moderation and let it not be my normal like i've been doing and i will be fine so i went and had my test and i came out but the fact said hey you're facing this you're facing that and you're facing this if you you know don't change some things but i never received what the fact said I only, the faith kicked in. And I know why I kicked in, because as, as much as I can never be in this enough, what was inside of me began to come out. So faith is inside of me. I really don't care what I see. Faith is inside of me. Amen. Faith is inside. The faith, faith speaks. Faith speaks. So as pastor has been teaching us, in the word of God and developing a kingdom mindset, there are so many things where we are in error as people of God. King's word, king's power. 
It has nothing to do with hypertension and possible heart. King's word, King's power. I'm going to stop. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to see this before it was too late. And let's go ahead and move on. King's word, King's power. Oh, Lord, what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? None of that. None of that. The word of God doesn't say that. The word of God says in the in the tongue, there's there's death and life. There's blessings and curses like this tongue. Right. What am I going to speak? Am I going to say what his word says? His word will not return to him void. God, you already said it in your word, Father, in your word. The king's word is powerful. Pastor taught us this. It's powerful and it's powerful to deliver. It will do what it says it will do. So this week, as we're walking through life this week, let's, let's get in the book and allow the pages of life to speak to us, allow God to talk to us. And what goes in will come out. What goes in will come out. I know it's true. When I used to listen to a whole lot of hip hop, it used to come out. What goes in will come out. So now somebody asks me, like, what you do when somebody cuts you off in the car? What, 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 you, what uh, come on, come on, go ahead. Thank you, Lord, I didn't hit this person. Go on, give them, give them some sense, Lord, to slow down because really they're probably not going anywhere. It's a different response than it used to be. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, let, you know, I might go out of here today and, and I might get angry or something if somebody do something. But my point is this. What's inside will come out. Amen. 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 So let's get in the word. The Bible says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It won't return void the word is perfect and it does not err the word of god is perfect and it does not err god is good he's good to us his mercy is everlasting his truth endureth forever that's the word of god 